Hi guys, Squall here. Welcome to another Transport Fever 2 video. Glad you're enjoying this series. Remember the goal is to get a billion dollars in hard mode and connect all the cities, although we're not that far off a billion dollars, but you know, we've still got plenty of work to do. Uh, if you're new here, check out the entire series. There's lots to watch. Uh, we've still got plenty to go. I reckon we're probably about halfway through the whole thing at the moment. Maybe-ish. <laughs> it's only 1968. I want to see the high-tech stuff before we finish here. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe if you're new and also check out the uh, YouTube membership program. Be you know Consider be becoming a member and supporting the channel. So on the last video, uh, we did a bunch of things and I said to you that uh, in this video, what we'll probably start doing is doing some of the more complex uh, goods delivery. And by complex, I mean poor old Worthing, I'll be honest with you. Worthing is unfortunate in that it requires machines and goods and machines and goods are complicated to produce because there are a kind of a multi-logistic setup you can't just make machines from a raw material uh, you have to put things together as for example here with with worthing and machines down here is a machine factory which will take planks and steel and planks of course is made from logs so you take logs cut them into planks bring them here and then with steel you need to take iron ore and coal and make steel from it and then bring that here which then makes the machines you know what i mean it's like complicated however i've decided not to do that in this episode because in this episode what i want to do is i want us to focus on trying to deliver something to all of the cities right because at the moment a lot of the cities that are growing are getting one thing uh, for example bradford is getting fuel it's not getting any tools but it's getting fuel so it is growing Aylsham's getting food so it's growing uh, Romsey's getting fuel, etc. But there are a number of cities that are not growing because they're not getting anything. For example, Biggleswade and Worthing, both of which, you know, the RNG gods laughed when they made this because they put machines and goods in two cities right next to each other. So pretty much they're going to be the last ones to get stuff delivered to them, I think. Twickenham's not so bad. Um, we're at least taking Conmat into there. Uh, same thing with Hyde. In terms of cities that are getting nothing, though, uh, Lugesol is one of them. It requires either tools or machines. Now, tools aren't that complicated to make. Henley on Thames requires tools, but it's also getting con mats. I'm not worried about that. Sandhurst is getting nothing, and it requires tools. Um, and I think they are the two, the only two that are getting nothing at the moment that we can make easily. So, Lugesol and Bradford and Sandhurst all require tools, right? Bradford's already getting something, so I'm not too worried, but maybe we can start doing something with these two, yeah? So I had a look around and thinking, okay, so how can we make tools quite easily? And it just so happens that if you look, right outside of Sandhurst is a tools factory, uh, which is rather convenient for two reasons. Firstly, the tools factory is very close to Sandhurst, so we can just truck it straight in there, right? So that's great. And secondly, because the factory is actually on the sea, like next to the water, uh, we can actually ship goods away. So if you do want to take tools to Lugesol as well, it's not that tricky because we can just bring a ship up to here, put a port there, truck it straight in. Brilliant. You could even start taking them to Twickenham if you really wanted to. However, I don't think this factory on its own is going to support too many things. It's got eight levels, right? Which, if I remember, I think can probably support three, perhaps four cities maximum. Depends how big they get. Uh, so, but what I want to do is I want to focus on getting Sandhurst some tools initially, and then maybe we'll connect in Bradford because it's not far away. Uh, and it actually has a train station, so it won't be too hard to get stuff straight in there. And then we can start shipping things up to Lugesol, or we can just ship them straight away. Either or. So the question is, how do we get planks? Well, again, conveniently, there are planks right here. And then even more convenient than that, there are logs <laughs> right, right on our doorstep. So we've got everything we need. So then it becomes, okay, well, how do we do this? How do we want to bring stuff in? How do we want to bring the planks from here to here? We could take them on a road, truck them straight over. I'm kind of thinking we can probably train them there. Uh, just bring a, a train, drop them off, come back, just shuttle planks across there. It's going to need quite a few as it grows. Uh, for now, we can probably just truck stuff from here to here. And then later on, we can probably train that in or even just truck it. It doesn't really matter. 
But what I want to do first is just start by deleting a bunch of these roads here because, you know, country roads are very rarely any use to us, particularly at this stage in the game. So I'm just going to get rid of this stuff across here. Uh, we can leave the bridge here for now. We can probably connect something later. If you want to, you know, use that road, use that bridge, we can. Uh, but in terms of going across the bay, I think probably we'll be looking to have maybe like a truck stop there. So if we build, so let's build our road and then we can just do it while we're talking. If we build our road, let's say a nice quick one like that. Something like that will do. Um, let's make it a bit longer. Maybe like this. And then what we can do is have the road just kind of curve off. In, in the right direction if we aim this properly like that and then our train station should be able to slot in nicely so we're going to go high speed because we may as well uh 240 meters we only need one platform but we'll do two just in case we ever get to the point where we need to be loading it really depends how busy it gets it's unlikely we'll need both platforms but you can see that's highlighting there so we'll drop that in and then we want to just quickly extend this road a little bit more and then we can drop a truck station in again zero left uh two we want two right because we're going to have two possible drop-offs coming in uh we'll make sure we don't get in line of the track it's going to go in that direction and we'll drop that in around about say actually let's just look at the level of this ground i might just level this before we do this get the flatten tool Notice, of course, that all the um, all the tool options have reset, which is one thing I've noted in, in previous videos, that uh, when you restart the game, it just throws away all the settings. It's very frustrating, and I really wish they would fix it. But that's the way it is. So we configure it. We shall delete that entrance, replace it with one of those, and then we'll drop some more platforms in like that, and then exit. Is that an exit? That's an exit. That is an exit. Uh, streets. Let's get the one way. Uh, we'll bring that in like this. And we'll take them out like that. Click on tools. Move the lights. Jobs are good. So, just to be clear, if we click on this, everything is connected. So, next thing to do is come up here, delete this rubbish country road. And we will replace it with a nice road. We'll take this near one. We could we could do that one first, but I just don't see the point. Uh, streets, we want a nice big country road. We don't need to bother with bus lanes here because we're going to be the only traffic uh, in these parts. There won't be uh, anybody else here. So we get the building. Now this one does need to have some capacity. Let's just move that out a bit because it is it is a loading station so it does need to kind of buffer things so you want to make it a reasonable size the last place we just built we could we could have just made it like really small shouldn't need two platforms but again i'd just rather build it now and then we don't need to build it later just in case we need to double line it and by double line i mean what you can do sometimes if the demand is too great for your trucks to cope with you can basically create two lines between these and have two sets of trucks loading and unloading into different bays uh, because otherwise if you have too many trucks on a line that they're, they're all queuing up sat here waiting for this guy uh, to load because it takes time to load goods into the back of a truck so we'll be sat there and holding everybody else up well if you have two lines you can have two trucks sat there loading loading up if you get what i mean uh, I don't think we'll need it, but, you know, let's just have the option in case we do. We'll build it like that. And then we'll build it like that. There we go. Last thing we'll do is we'll connect the road in there. And you guessed it, remove the lights. Bingo, bango. Right, so the only thing now that's missing is a depot. You can't spawn vehicles without a depot. You know, we could connect the roads here and spawn it over there, but honestly, what is the point? For like 15 grand, we may as well just have a depot over here and then we can get things in quickly if we need to. Get rid of those lights. Okay, that will take care of that. So now we're going to punch our way 
obviously the bigger area here that we spend the bigger the bridge etc uh, we're not likely to need this water for anything else so we can just go over there and it won't really matter if we cut off the navigation you know because it's unlikely we we might have ships come here one day maybe but it's unlikely uh let's get rid of these roads think about how we want to orient this now in terms of orienting this platform as i've already said we may want to take things from here up to uh is that sandhurst i can't remember one second let's get rid of that there we go we may want to take things to Bradford. We may want to take things to Bradford. So it would be a good idea if the train kind of came in here and the platform was oriented so that it can branch off up there, I think, is how it should roll. So what we'll do first is we'll create the road. Like so. Now this is going to need a... Let's think about this a second because it, we are going to need to get trucks out of here. So if you've got trains coming in and going out that way, how do our trucks get from here over there? Well, one possible way is if we build it close enough, we might be able to get away with a a through, um, how, what do you call it? One second, I'm not focused. We need to, let me turn it a bit further out. Something like, is that the angle we want? Yeah, that'll do. As long as we don't build the platform too far away, there might be a connection line from here to, to a truck depot on the other side. Uh, we shall try. Let's see what happens. And the way we do that is... Wow, look how much that's just digging into the ground. That's crazy. The elevation change is unbelievable. One second. If we just get them flat there. Yeah, look at that. Blimey. It's really hard to see that elevation change, but it's definitely there. Um, that's going to affect our train line. Sure. We just have to start off and climb. Um, yeah, so in theory, there's a line through from... I think there was a, a footpath connection there. So there's a line through there, through the train station to the other side. So as long as it's not too far, if we put a cargo building on that side, like that, doesn't matter how many we put, and then we put another road on this side. So it is possible that a truck station here would connect to this factory directly because of the lines... You see the length from that path there um, through here to here. It's touch and go. It can't be very long, but it might just work. We'll find out when we put this down. Okay, so you see how that is highlighting something on... I don't know if you can see, it's very subtle. But it is highlighting stuff on the factory, which means this should, should work. Let's plan that out. So we'll build like so. Like that. I don't know if that made sense or whether I just bamboozled you completely. It's all about distance. Um, we know that this train, this truck station here will connect to there. We know that. But will it connect to here? In order for this to connect to here, there has to be a connection through the whole sequence that isn't too far. If we try to build, you know, out here, it, the distance to there is too great, so it won't be connected. But if you click on that, it is connected to this because the route from the footpath through the station to here is, is within range. And that's how you can make it work. But always click to make sure it highlights. That's the only definitive way of knowing if what you've done is connected. So let's just punch that out like that. And then we'll flatten this here. Remarkably hilly round it, it really is. Right, let's get rid of that and we'll put an entrance there. Now this is gonna be a caching point because 
tools are being produced and they need to be cached before being taken away. There we go. Condition of multiple vehicles is very poor. Well, hopefully, after yesterday's, not yesterday, the other day's video, why did that just do that to my road? You scumbag game. I can't believe he did that. Okay, that'll have to do. The curvature was too much, apparently. Um, hopefully, after my video on emissions, you've got a much better understanding about when it matters about the condition of vehicles and stuff. So I hope that video was at least useful. Uh, I'm going to delete this now. We'll delete that as well. And speaking of emissions, we now need to think about how we're going to get the stuff into here, right? Okay, so we're going to bring tools to here. And the residency is down here. So we're not going to mind if we just drive straight to the stop and drop our stuff there. We're not going to go through any residential areas. So we're not going to create pollution. The only thing to think about is how they get back. So if we drop stuff off here, how do they get back? Are they going to try and go through the housing? Are you going to try and go this way? Because this is a very... Um, it's a road that doesn't have... Let me get it to um, this. It's a road that doesn't have a bus lane. So I think it's probably worth just taking the hit right now and upgrading that road. And then maybe we can just put a waypoint here. So we'll do a truck unload like there to get all those tools maybe even yeah here we'll do we'll do a truck unload there to get those tools and then we'll waypoint it around this way so it goes back that way capiche hope so right let's get curvature and then we'll switch to a non-town road like that and then we'll upgrade. Just make sure it's got a bus lane, even though it doesn't need it. There you go. That should be that. So this is going to be a line. A Sandhurst. This is going to be trucks. Sandhurst. Uh, tools. And we'll give it like a bluish color, like a, maybe a dark blue. And that's going to go from this truck stop to this truck stop. And then it's going to waypoint... You see? Because otherwise it just starts taking a really rubbish route back. And it's just better if you control it because you can make sure they stay on the fast roads and they don't get in the way of other traffic and they don't get held up and they don't take pollution and noise where you don't want it. So waypoints are really, really useful for that kind of thing. Right, that defines that line. So the next thing we need to do is bring the track in and bridge it over here. This is going to be fun. So we're going to start off just by seeing what it does. So if I connect that into there. Right, so it is actually leaving a gap here. There is sufficient elevation on this side to leave a gap in the navigation there. You can see how it's green, whereas over here it's not. So ships can't pass through here, but they can pass through this bit, uh, which is fine by me because obviously this is a much higher elevation. It's You can see it coming down. Well, that's fine, because it's going to be fully loaded coming downhill, which will actually speed it up. Uh, so the only thing then is what kind of bridge do we want? I think a nice blue one, and I'm happy to build that. That's pretty much straight in. Then we can do that, and then, of course, put a little diamond interchange. The game will let me. One at that side just allows the uh, the trains to go into either platform. That's the whole purpose of it. Um, and then we just need to bring in trains onto the line. So I'm thinking, I'll just stick a depot out here, like maybe that. So unlikely to build any wider on this thing. Very unlikely. And then we'll just join in like so. Right. Okay. So then in terms of signaling, we want a one-way signal. We want a signal just before the merge. We also want one here, just after the diamond and just before the merge. And then we'll turn auto sig on and we want one just after the merge there like that. That will take us all the way up to here. So we're missing one just about there before the diamond. And then what we'll do is we'll put one on the opposite side of that one, which will signal all the way back. 
And then we just need to have one here, but we just need to turn off auto sig before we put that one there. Like so. And that gives us all of our signaling. Job done. So now we need to have, uh, what's this going to be? Planks. So it's Sandhurst planks on a train. So we want a rail. Sandhurst planks like that. And it's disappeared up here. And we'll give it like a, maybe like a lightish orange color. And we're going to be going from this cargo platform to this cargo platform. Did we want to mess about with the loading, unloading? Meh. Well, you know, we could make it wait for like 30 seconds just so it doesn't go away completely empty. But, you know, we kind of want it to shuttle, really. Uh, and when it gets to the other side, it'll have nothing it can bring back. This thing doesn't accept anything but logs, so that's never an issue. The last thing we need, of course, is we need to bring the, the actual logs themselves in. So we'll have, it's going to be a truck. Sandhurst logs one, because we know we're going to need two at some point when this thing scales up. And we'll create it like a dark red color. We're going to go from here to here. Uh, when it gets to Sandhurst sidings, um, we'll not tell it to wait for too long. We'll just literally another... 20, well, actually, no, we won't even bother. We'll just have it doing its thing. Okay, I think we're good to go. So if we put a truck, let's get a nice cargo truck that's going to deliver... Oh, we've got Isuzu, look at that. Uh, so this is going to be tools. That can take 14 tools at 80k. That could take 17 tools at 80k, potentially. And that is... Well, that's cheaper. Well, I'll have one of them. So we'll have one of those. We shall put it on a dark blue color. Assign it to the tools line. Uh, no, we'll assign it to the... Wait a minute. It would help if I actually connected the road, wouldn't it? Because I remember deleting that now. So we'll do that. Turn that off. Turn that off. And then we'll click on the depot again and say, yep. Fair play, you couldn't actually get out the depot. And then we'll smooth that out because it looks a bit rubbish. Okay. Right, so we've got him going. We need a train going. We also need logs going. So we'll get some log vehicles going. Have we got anything that can specialize in logs? Well, that could take 14. See, trains can have specialized carriers. Um, with trucks, it tends to be more... Um, uh, what do they call this? What's the word? not consist, um, aggregate. That was the word I was looking for, aggregate. They have specialized aggregate trucks and they have specialized trucks for logs in the sour range, but I don't know if we have them in the later ranges. No, we've got fuel trucks. So it does seem to vary from year to year. We'll put like six of them on there for now. Uh, that's gonna be a dark red color. Okay, so that's going to start moving logs. So the next thing we need is a train. We kind of want to keep it cheap because it's not going to make good money in the early days, but it is a bit of a bit of an investment. It's never going to get to 120Ks. There's just no way it will ever reach top speed down here. Not a chance. So maybe we go a bit cheaper because obviously, look at that. This is like half the price. 177 Tractive for half the money. So why, why waste twice the money trying to get to 90Ks? Yeah, because the tractive effort on this is very, very good. That's only a bit more, but obviously that has more power. can get to a higher speed, but we're not doing the long journey, so let's just stick with one of them. So we'll get a BRV on there, get some cargo. We're going to be taking uh, planks, so we need the flat car. Even though this can do 120, we could take this flat car and assume we're not going to get to 80, but I think we'll just do that. Uh, so we'll get capacity 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Let's make it like 200 meters for now and we can always make it a bit bigger later um let's call it orange we'll do that right that's the line established i'll just accelerate time a little bit and let's see if things are behaving so if we click on this it's recognizing the sawmill as a consumer and if we click on this it's not yet recognizing this as a consumer because it's not got anything to ship i would for me as a game developer, I I would love it if, even though there's nothing to ship right now, it would be nice if it gave me a visual clue that it was 
intending to send things to this factory, if it would just highlight this here in some way, or put an asterisk there or something like that, zero. I haven't got anything to ship, but I am going to. Yeah, that would be really useful, but it's not in the game. So we'll just wait for logs to turn up. This should then drop at the truck station. Speed up a bit. There we go. Okay, that's now producing stuff. And now the consumer tab shows that there is, in fact, stuff going to the tools factory. Perfect. So the train's right down here right now, so we're not worried about that. Um, right, so while it's doing its thing, I propose that we then either build the shipping lane or build a train to here now my objective my stated goal at the start of this video was that i wanted to make sure that all the cities were getting some stuff so with that in mind i will not make this the second one i will make this the second one but i need to do something i need to gouge this land out a little bit I, it, it is navigable but i don't like the look of it i also need to make sure we can get under here uh, if we click on this one here, you can see that that's green. So we can go under that bridge and we can, in fact, come all the way down here. Um, I'm going to gouge that out a bit, but I'm not going to do it in this video. I'll probably do it offline just to make it look nice because it looks very shallow for shipping to me anyway. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at Lug Shawl and we'll decide, right, the tools are going to need to go into the back here. And we have a ring road that I built. So what I think will be the best option is if we can bring the trucks in and then drive them that way so we'll probably have to add a waypoint so we'll do that now we'll add a waypoint here and we'll bring the trucks and take them around the ring road and drop them in there and then we stay away from all this housing so what we need now is uh shipping we need a cargo harbor large one terminal will do us because if you do two it always does it like that and personally i don't like it I like to roll my own, as it were. Um, so what we'll do is bring it to like here. Somewhere like that looks pretty good. And then of course, the next thing I always do is configure it. And we can in fact just add another platform either way, just to make it look pretty cool. And then we put large landings on them like that. And then the only th thing that I like to do, as you've seen before, is just bring the land. Obviously, where you click the mouse is the center point that defines the height. So I've got it on the flatten tool. So if I go a bit further back, I know this is a bit higher. And then as I come forward, it will bring that height of land up to the port like that, you see. And that way, it kind of makes it feel like it's built up. And then if it's not quite right, just smooth that out a little bit. So it looks like it's a bit more natural, as it were. There we go. Back, back. And then I'll take the flatten tool again, and we'll just create a flat area for our trucks to get in and out of. And then we'll smooth that out. What have we got here? Hovercraft, a BR-103. That's a very nice... Or the Man SL. That's a good bus. Intercity bus. That's your, that's your baby, that is. Um... Right, so that should do that. So then we just need to build the road. So we just need to have a road cutting through like that. And then we might as well curve it up here. And then we'll take it into that junction there. And then we just want to have the truck station. Now this is going to be a caching area, so we want it to the right a little bit. Because it does need to, to buffer stuff. So we'll have it come in like that, then we'll add a few more cargo bays. Because, uh, I mean, obviously ships are very big and they can just unload like, you know, 200 tools at a time. So you want to make sure that your platforms are ready for that because your trucks are nowhere near as big. I uh, didn't add the exit. I'll just make that road a little bit longer. Take off the bus lane. Back 
come in there. Get rid of those traffic lights. Looks a little bit janky, so just, you know, go in and smooth it out to make it look good. You could even sort of flatten the land here if you wanted to, just to make it look like it was actually built there. Uh, and that should do that. So the next thing you need is the actual line. So we can go trucks. Uh, Logisol. hate that name. Tools. <laughs> Logisol tools, which is there. We may as well have that as like a dark blue as well. And we're going to go from here via that waypoint. And then we're going to drop somewhere here. So we just need to define the actual drop point. Now, if we're coming in from this side and we're trying to hit all these tools, I think anywhere here should more or less do it. But the only consideration is how do they get back again? And can they get down this road? Just looking at this road, I'm thinking straight away, this needs to be upgraded with a bus lane, uh, which is going to trash some of these commercial buildings, which is a little bit unfortunate. And then we'll put a waypoint there. Uh, we'll go back to the line screen. And then, no, nope, we'll go back to the building at the actual drop-off point. Yeah, you see some of the commercial stuff has gone, but it's growing back. It will always have like a, a certain amount of it. That should catch it. And then drop, and then waypoint. And he wants to go that way. He wants to come back. Okay. Um, in that case, we hmm, we can let him do that. But the problem is he's driving through. I think this is all housing. So it's not... Actually, that's commercial, though. This is housing. So it's not too bad. It's going to create a bit more than I'd like, but I think it'll be okay. So the route is going to be that, and then back this way. But it does mean we're going to have to upgrade that road there just to make sure that they're in bus lanes and don't get stuck anywhere. So that should do that. So I'll put a couple of trucks in there, otherwise I will forget. So we'll just have like three for now. It's dark blue. We'll just all tools. We'll just manage that line and say when you get down to here, wait till full for like five minutes seriously because you know ships are so slow they'll take forever to get here you might as well sit there rather than drive off and then the next thing we need to do is build a port um down here to collect this stuff but let's just see what's going on here let's take stock of the situation uh we've got plenty of wood building up there train is starting to earn a profit so that's good he is climbing back uphill and therefore struggling to get up to that full speed that I mentioned, which I think is about 90. So, you know, it's it was a decent choice of locomotive and consist, I think. Works quite nicely. It's got 65 capacity. There's 62 already here. This thing is not quite running out, so it's doing okay. That should hopefully start to level up soon, but there's a lot of logs here, so we're going to have to bring in some more vehicles now i think we'll just double the amount on that line because it's producing a lot we're only shipping half of it so let's get that let's get that supply up get this thing brewing because we're only transporting 27 percent so far it's capable of much more and then we'll have a look if sandhurst is getting any tools yet not yet that's because is that the truck there no stuff waiting there he is. He just, just dropped off. Yeah, there you go. So they just got the first tool. So again, we need to uh, bring in some more of those trucks. If I can find the truck, there he is. Truck current is only one of them. So we'll have... What's the capacity on that truck? It was it 17. Three of them should do it, I think. Three of them should do it for now. Uh, it's not a long way to go. Three lots of 17 is, what, 50... 51 something like that um yeah we might need some more trucks there later but i'm happy with that for now uh so yeah let's start thinking about how we're going to get more demand by shipping the tools up to logisol all right if we want to put this down it's going to be a bit awkward because we've got to connect it in here i don't want it to look a bit rubbish so what i might do is like if I put it at an angle like that, it means I can't have a nice long 
loading bay platform or we could stick it out 90 degrees there's lots of different ways of doing this um, but i think what i want to do is make it we'll do some terrain uh forming first and i think we'll i'll just do that and then we shall pick a level here and just kind of build it out a bit more like that so it looks a little bit more man-made and we'll smooth it out in a sec because we don't want a beachy area for something like what we're doing here so we'll just build it out like that and then we'll put this cargo down like this uh, like that that should do it and then we can just connect the road up to this like that actually we come that way a little bit there we go then we can get this road let's get the full size road and obviously there's a terrain elevation difference going on here so this is going to be interesting trying to connect that you see it's going to look a bit rubbish no matter what we do what we could do is <clears throat> if we hold shift and delete that then build this road here like this and then drop that like that that looks a little bit better than it did otherwise and then what we can do is bring that to circle and we'll just kind of smooth this out or reduce the strength a bit so we get a bit more subtle control there we go and that looks okay um you know we could sort of shift delete that out you could trim this if you really want to but i'm not that fussed about it i'll leave it so then what we'll do is we'll configure this and we'll bring in another now how do we want to design this one do we want to design it like this I tell you what we'll do. We'll do it like that, and then we'll do it like that. Just for no other reason, really, than it just looks interesting. We'll have the slot there like that. Now, why won't it let us build one there? I think it's the, the ground is too shallow here. So if we terrain form that... So we'll click in the deep area, and then gradually just move forward. We'll create a bit more depth there. So we'll create a bit of a deep water, then we'll just smooth it out like this because it wouldn't let me build a landing here. Oh, I know why. It's because I've put... Yeah, ignore me. It's because I've put it here. That's not a, now a full landing thing, because uh, I've built this out this way. We'd have had to have built it out from that, but you can't... I don't think you can build it out from the side. Yeah, you can't... Yes, you can. You can do it like this, so let's just delete that. There's a little... It's that little blue triangle at the back. It's that one that we want, so we build it out like this. And then we should be able to put a landing there, but we can't put one here because this isn't full length. So it just depends how you want to do it. But I think, you know, that looks pretty cool as it is. We could build it out further if you wanted to. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with that. We'll just drag that down and switch there. And then what we'll do is we'll just take a look at this bit here and see if we can't just smooth that out there. Drag the ground out that way there. And then just give that a little smooth over. Like that. Like that. Smooth that out. There you go. And that looks... I think it looks quite natural, doesn't it? Yeah. That's how I like to do things. Just, you know, there's no reason to do it. We only need one bay here. We don't need two landing bays. But just having things different in your city just kind of makes things look a, a bit more interesting, I think. Anyway, so this is going to be tools. So this is going to be Luggershaw from uh, Sandhurst. So we're going to define that line. Ships. So we're going to go Sandhurst to Lugersol Tools. Uh, let's click on ships a second. And we'll make that a, it's a bluish color. So we're going to go from here to here. Like that. It's worked it out. Now that's quite a long journey. And you can see what's happening here, which was kind of why I want to excavate that a little bit because i don't quite like what it's doing there but the important thing is when it gets down here we're going to tell it to load wait for a full load we can tell it to wait for you know, like five minutes and the reason for that is just to give this train chance to go backwards and forwards with tools and load up properly because it's quite a long journey um so next thing we need to do is define a ship so we'll come up here to the existing uh shipyard and then we need to get a large ship we want something that's good at carrying tools. 
Uh, so that rules these two out because they're tankers. So you've got this. This can do tools. That's a massive ship, 220. Probably don't need anything so expensive initially. But having said all of that, these are a little bit ancient. Uh, available from 1898, you see. So it's kind of going to have to be the Axel P is the cheapest one, really. We don't, we don't really want anything else at this point. I don't want a paddle boat, so it's going to have to be one of these. We'll just buy one of them and we'll stick it on the line and that'll just get the line established that should come out and it come all the way down here it's going to take it ages to get down there but the important thing is will this start to see it as a consumer and the answer is yes so sandhurst are buying the tools and Lugisol is going to be buying the tools that's going to create more demand but like i said that's going to take a long time to get stuff up there which means these three trucks are going to run at a massive financial loss. I say massive, I mean, you know, we're not talking millions, we're talking thousands. I'm going to second. Get rid of that. Um, it's going to come through here, we'll get rid of that. Cool. Uh, so they will now start to get some tools. Uh, I'm just looking at our balance here. We've got three quarters of a billion. We're kind of knocking on the door of that billion, aren't we? But let's just quickly check the line again. How are you doing? You're still level one. That's surprising. Why are you still level one? I think it's because... All right, so we're now transporting more. But I think the line frequency could be an issue. Maybe this... It could well be down to the line frequency here. Let me click that. So if we double click on this, it's a five minute frequency. Uh, I think it's going to want to see more frequency to level up this demand it certainly should have the demand at sandhurst they require 71 tools just click on it suppliers yeah the ship in 100 to sandhurst which is about half of its possible production value i think it's just a numbers game actually looking at it because sandhurst only requires 73 uh Lugisol is quite small and requires 50 so there's not quite the demand here yet. The option really is to just start bringing tools up here as well. Uh, because Bradford on Avon's quite a big town. I think we're going to have to do that. I think we can quickly do it. Um, so we'll grab some track. And we'll go this way. And we'll connect it in to that platform. Just have a quick look at what's going on. Uh, so that will cut off that waterway which could be an issue if you want to start shipping down here um, hmm. so we could raise that slightly if we go up a lot like that so if we do shift M and N and we just bring it down it's going to be a very very long bridge otherwise I kind of want to keep that navigable, but I don't want to have a massive bridge to do it. So at the moment, I'm just holding shift. There you go. So at that point, it changes. So about that would give us, yeah, that's a reasonable size bridge. So we'll make that blue. And that would keep the line nice and flat. 1.3 million. Let's drop that in. Uh, now, when it gets down to here, where's that going? It's going to there. So we'll leave that as a single entrance. And what we'll do is we'll just come out like this. get over the bridge and then we'll carry on so about here and then what we'll do is we'll come out of there like that perfect and then we'll get the signals one way that and then we'll go to the other side oh that's worked out beautifully look at that just before the station entrance Lovely jubbly. Right, that's that defined. So the next thing is, can we get trains onto that line? Well, if a train comes out of this yard here, it can go straight through, but then it can't get from here onto that track. But what we can do is we can change this and make it into a diamond instead. And then we get the best of both worlds. We should then be able to reuse that that yard. Let me get rid of that signal and that one. There we go. And 
then we'll have a signal bar. Make sure you turn auto mod off while you put that signal back, otherwise it'll try and put another one down here. Uh, so now it should be able to take a train out of there and punt it straight through. So what we need to do now is define the lines. This is going to be Sandhurst to Bradford rail line. Sandhurst Bradford tools. We'll give that a purplish colour. We'll come into here and we're going to go to the need to make sure it comes into the correct platform which it does it needs to be the different platform there so we've got that line defined i don't think a train coming out of here will figure out how to get there and the reason is because there's a break between here and here but we'll see i think when we try and bring a train out of here it won't understand how to get there last thing we need to do is deliver the tools to bradford so we need to look at where the tools are going now the tools are going here but there's a huge residency area here so that makes this an emissions consideration. Yeah? Like what we don't want is the trucks coming out and just going that way. We don't want that. We need them to come around this ring road uh, and come in here and avoid that residence. Otherwise, we're going to increase the pollution. So what we'll do is we'll go to the truck stop. And we'll work out where we're going to drop off first. There's a nice um, bus lane road there, which if we drop anywhere, if we drop here... Hmm, looks like the sound's going to grow there. So I think probably here is going to be about the right area. So we'll drop there. And then we've got to think, well, how's he going to get back? Because ideally what we want is the bus to basically, uh, the bus, the truck to use this road, but not come back that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade that road there. And then we're going to, we're going to have a couple of waypoints. We're going to have one for the return journey going that way and one for the inbound journey coming this way some way here like that i think those two should do it let's try it so we're gonna have bradford tools uh, we'll color it like a light blue and we're going to come from this truck stop then we're going to go to that waypoint and then we're going to drop off at that truck point there. Then we're going to take this waypoint back. And it's going to try and loop again and go that way. So we need to give it a bit more encouragement. So we'll have another waypoint here. And then... So we'll click on Bradford. Stop 4. And then after stop 4, we'll come to here. There we go. That makes sure that the trucks go that way. And don't go near the housing estate, which is what we need. Now then, we need to find the depot. There's the depot. Now, the depot's now in the middle of this lot. <laughs> but I think this is commercial. So in theory, yeah, it's commercial. So they, they won't care. If this was like here, and these were all housing, you might want to consider moving it. Um, but where it should be fine. So we get cargo. We'll get uh, some of these trucks here. And we'll buy three or four of them, I suggest. And uh, we want Bradford tools, so it's like blue color. We we'll drop them in. And then the last thing we need is the train itself. So I think we'll probably, what we'll do is we'll just clone this train. Um, is that going to work? No, not clone that train. No, we're not going to clone that train. Uh, it's got the wrong consist on the back for a kickoff. We want something that can take tools, which is going to be a box car. Uh, I was thinking I can clone it and reassign its line, but I can't. So what we'll do is we'll have the BRV again, and then the cargo will need to be these box cars, I think, uh, this one, because this takes tools. Any kind of goods tends to go, any kind of product produced goods that goes in boxes and things like that, that you'll find them in box cars, which are these things. So we're not going to need a huge amount of these initially. That's quite a lot of capacity. Uh, let's see. Let's go with 140... That's 104 capacity. That's a huge capacity for what we're doing. Way too much. Well, I think we'll do it because otherwise I'll forget to change it later. Uh, Sandhurst planks is not what we want. Got the purple color. Now, when we try to assign this, I think this might fail. Okay, it didn't. Which means it has worked out how to get there, which is fantastic news. Just to speed that up. 
now you'll see our signaling in action now. Yeah? Because you've got a, a signal there and a signal there. They can't both use this contested section. So as that moves through, this will have to stop, assuming it gets there on time. But you see it's showing an aspect of red. That's green. This is still red. Once it clears that block there, this block's now free. That goes green. This goes to red. And for the next 400 meters, it can't move until that breaks that signal there. The moment it clears that signal, this goes green. And that's literally how signaling works. And I've just noticed for some stupid reason the game has done this <laughs> ah. <laughs> you see I can't leave it like that I'm going to have to fix that it's literally put two different bridges up oh. man that's annoying right, I've just noticed something else he's going he's gonna to basically block this train now because he's going to sit in that platform uh, the BR218, 140 Ks, nice locomotive. There you go. So he's going to go through, and he will now get to carry on. He's punted, because of the diamond interchange, he's put himself onto the start of that line, which means he now goes on his merry way. Perfect. Sandhurst Bradford Tools. There you go. So it's starting to produce tools now, because there's a train on the line. It's fully established. Uh, that is now leveled up. Plenty of tools waiting here. Ships coming in. Now the ship's getting near to here. What we'll do is we'll clone that because that will bring another one out the shipyard there, which means there's more or less one at opposite ends of the line, which will increase our line frequency. The mistake to make is to just spawn like four ships out of there and they'll all be so close together it'll take ages to spread out. If you can remember, just let them run the line a bit and then spawn the next one. Okay, so given that, um, let's go and have a quick look. What's going on over here? Consumers. Now it's shipping 200 to there, to Sandhurst. Okay, that should level up soon. It's got planks. We might have to add another train here just to keep the frequency going because what we don't want is this thing running out of planks before this can take some more down there. I reckon it might run out soon. But this is going to level up real quick now. Let's have a look at what's going on with that. That thing's about to level, so it's going to start chucking out a lot more logs in a minute. So yeah, the line's getting established. We've created more demand, which although we have to run everything on a loss initially, these things start to pick up. And uh, we start to make good money. Sandhurst is now getting a good amount of tools. His population is on the rise, which is great news. Um, I'm sure the bus passengers are loving it. Zero, two, finances are still still a bit pants, but they should start to improve. Let's have a look at the line. So that's the finance on the line right now, so it is a complete loss leader. But I reckon that will change soon, and we need to keep our eye on it, because these, uh, these people at Sandhurst will want to go to other towns right now they are absolutely boxed in here blimey this town has no connections to anything no wonder they don't want to get on the bus right so i think in the next video we're going to have to make a link between bradford uh and sandhurst we've got to get these people moving it's quite a sad situation living here right now okay in come the planks he just ran out so yeah, we're, we're knocking on the door of needing a second train at this point. Uh, so I think I'll do it now. So I'll bring another train in right now, which will come in at the other end. And that way these two can shuttle backwards and forwards. Because this is about to grow really quickly. That's just leveled up. That's about to level up. This is leveling up rapidly. The demand is really starting to ramp up. Um, but yeah, things are doing good. Right, we should start to get some tools soon. Let's uh, so find the trucks. There's one. There you go. He's got some tools. Nice. Yeah, so development started to happen over here. I just saw stuff getting upgraded, which is what happens when you start to bring what they need. Uh, bringing tools into the tool district, and that means this should start to go up, 
And the population should hopefully start to rise shortly because it's been going down a little bit. So that we do not want. There you go. Tools delivered. Yeah, I need to work out why they're um, reducing in size. I expect that will change shortly. Logisol is going to have to wait quite a while for its tools, unfortunately. That's nothing we can do. That's shipping for you. Everything happens at a glacial pace. Advantage is the ship can actually take a lot of stuff over. Now, we've got the line waiting for quite a long time. I'm going to reduce that to like two and a half minutes. Um, I don't want it waiting too long. Cool. Okay, so in terms of the stated goal of getting stuff to every city, we've got stuff to Sandhurst, we've got even more to Bradford, and very soon, Ludgersoul's going to get some stuff. Uh, Twickenham is already getting uh, con mats. We could, if we need more demand, we can, if we need to, bring tools to Twickenham because we've already imported it on a ship. We can build a high-speed road or, sh or train and ship it over there if we need to. Uh, but in terms of how many towns are not getting anything, like I said, Worthing and Biggleswade are going to be the last two to receive absolutely nothing. If you look here, if you sort by size, that's probably a very good clue. There you go. So if you sort by size, uh, Worthing is getting nothing. Biggleswade is getting nothing. And currently, Ludgersall is getting nothing, but that is about to change. So, once we get stuff into these two, we'll have completed our next goal of delivering to every city some goods that it needs, and then we just need to carry on developing. We're getting close to a billion dollars, guys. Things are absolutely flying now. But that's it for the end of the video. That's plenty long enough. Please give me a thumb up if you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to become a YouTube member if that's uh, of interest to you get some cool emojis to use in the in the chat and uh also you know you can join the discord server which is family friendly and you can loads of sim guys in there you can ask questions and things like that so well worth thinking about um if you want to support the channel and uh get into discord and get some cool emojis blah 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 <laughs> i won't bore you anymore thanks for watching guys thanks for your support take care happy transporting